Cats? It's me, Edgy! I'm in Orlando, Florida with Florida Coach getting our bus ready for this year's Jan Brat Tour. We're going to meet Jan and her husband Joe tomorrow morning. They're flying down from their home in Norwell, Massachusetts for the tour. I can't wait to see them. Great to be here. Hey, Hedgie, look at you. What a fine animal. Saturday morning. You're very attractive today. Thank you. What a nice welcome. I appreciate that. It's great to be here in Springfield. <clears throat> this man is my husband, Joe. Joe, would you want to just turn around and say hi? <laughs> He is a musician, and all of you children that are musicians know that the largest of all the string family is the double bass. It's over six feet tall, and that's what Joe plays for the Boston Symphony. So he comes in on my tours with me, and I go on his, his tours with him, but on his tours he makes me carry his double bass. <laughs> that's just a joke. When I go out to my mailbox or... Look at my email. The question kids ask. Hi, kids! It's me, Hedgie! This is my favorite part. Jan's drawing me in a space suit. When you're drawing, well, when you're drawing, you want that character to convey some kind of emotion to tell you, bring your story along. And I even have a trick that I use, which I make the face that I think my character should be making. And for some reason, it translates down my arm and... You know what I mean? When I'm drawing, I make the face. And that, for some reason, it works. Now, for a minute, I'm just going to stand in front so I can get the proportions right. And then I will move to the side so you can see. Because um, if you do the whole thing from the side, then he looks, he, does, he looks a little distorted. So I don't even need to put his eye or anything in yet. OK, so there's his head. Now I can go on the side. And I, here's his little eye. And at first, I'm just going to make a circle and fill it in with black, except for one tiny little spot. And that's the reflection in his eye. Some people call it the twinkle in their eye. And if you look at the person next to you, I bet you can see that you have a little bit of white sparkle in your eye. Yeah. It's a reflection. And that's because your eye reflects light, whereas your skin and your hair, not as much. So there's, and now he looks just kind of blank right now, like this. But now what I'll do is I'll just make a little line here, makes him look worried. And then I don't know what I'm doing now. I just am putting a little bit of the skin that surrounds his eye and <coughs> thinking he's a little bit alert. He's just landed on the surface of Nikop, 
And a, a hedgehog does not have eyebrows, but human beings' eyebrows are quite expressive. So I'm going to bunch up the fur over his eye, making it look like an eyebrow to kind of help along him looking kind of interested, but a little bit concerned about what's going on around him, because he's just landed. So there's the fur that makes his eyebrow, and a little bit underneath. I'm just using those soft little strokes to make it look like fur. Because the fur on a hedgehog's face is like a mouse or a bunny. It's nice and soft. And, that, and then I'll make a little bit of a turning up of his face so he's looking like, wow, what's going to happen next? And there's his nose. And actually, a hedgehog's nose is pretty shiny, too, so it has a shine mark on it. And then around his face, is another layer of fur that's a little bit thicker, more like a guinea pig. It's just a, co a little coarser. And there's his soft little ear. And if you ever get to see a real live hedgehog, check out their ear, because it's like a little piece of felt. It's so soft. And they have very keen senses. So he's looking at, I'm going to have him floating on the surface. So he's just going to be, be very interest, intensely interested in all the things that he's seeing on Mikop that look very weird, like those funny rocks that are kind of soft, and the aliens that are buzzing overhead, and that deep, deep blue sky, so unlike the sky at Earth, on Earth, because the atmosphere is thinner. And now I have to get in front, because I'm going to put his helmet on. And normally, if I was in my art studio, I would put a glass just over the drawing, and I would just trace it. But or I'd use a compass, but now I have to use freehand. So I don't want it to look like a tomato. I want it to look like a circle. I have to really concentrate. And that's a space helmet. And you know, at home, it takes me an hour just to do an inch. So this is going to be much faster, so it won't look exactly like my pictures in my books. And then here's the little fasteners that keep his helmet on. And I got, to, um, I got some good ideas for his space suit. Because a couple of years ago, I got to go up with the Blue Angels, which is the Navy's exhibition aerobatic team. I got to go fly with them, and they gave me a flight suit. And it said Blue Angels, and then it said Jan on it. And I would have worn it, but as all you ladies know, that a one-piece jumpsuit with an elasticized waist <laughs> is a very hard look to pull off. And it wasn't exactly the impression I wanted to leave you with. So I left my, <laughs> I left my jumpsuit at home. But I did use that idea for Hedgie's suit. And you know, the squadron was just so amazing the way that they used teamwork. And everybody helped. And that helped me with a story about Hedgie, especially at the beginning where he's in his lab. And everybody is helping out. And then he's in the cleanup crew. But he's been studying hard and made friends with a professor. And he knew just what to do. So there's his gloves. He's not sure what he's going to find on that. On the surface of Mikop could be anything. So he had those gloves to protect him. And then one of the decisions I had to make when I was designing Hedgie's, what Hedgie would look like, was would I put the prickles inside his uniform or outside? And I decided I would make them outside, because when he gets inside the geyser and plugs it, he uses those prickles to hold tight. And it's funny when you do a story, and this will happen to you too, sometimes when you're all done with it, all of a sudden a light goes off and you say, hey, wait a minute, I know what this story is about. And you think about something that's happened to you in the past or something you're dreaming about in the future. And for me, I, Hedgie's really a hero. And when I finished the story, I was thinking to myself, boy, Hedgie's at, is is steps forward and does something he's not sure that he can succeed at, but he's going to give it a try anyway. And so I was thinking to myself, this is like a note to myself, that sometime in everybody's life, they're asked to do something extraordinary. And it's up to you to decide, I'm going to, go, I'm going to give it a try. And so I hope I'm going to be the kind of person that will say, OK, I'm going to give it a try. So that's why I, he's a character close to my heart. So here's one little foot in his moon boot. I mean, it's not the moon, but they're moon boots. And then he'll have the other one back here because he's kind of floating. We'll put the rocks way underneath him. 
because the little the the planet Mikop is a tiny little planet, and I think you might have known from your reading about outer space that like if you were ever to set foot on Jupiter, you're probably weigh around 600 pounds because the gravity of the large planet compared to the Earth, and then a small planet, you'd be very light. Like on the Moon, they can bound up and down, and that's what Hedgie is doing on the planet of Mikop. So now I can color him in, and then this is a more of the art lesson time too because I've got a brown and a gray. And if you think about it, most of the time in nature, colors just don't come right out of the crayon box or the markers. You have to blend them because the light, will, the sunshine or the artificial light will hit different ways on an object. And so the surface will have different colors on it. Or it, the, the object could be round, not flat. And when the cur where the curve is, you can use a little shading to show that. And I'm going to show that on Hedgie's face because I'm going to start out with my brown marker which looks really flat. And then we'll see when I put the, br the gray over it how it can kind of change his face to look a little bit better. And here's a little hint that I always use, and that I don't know if many art teachers teach this, which is when you're doing your drawing and it's starting to look a little bit weird and you're not really sure what's wrong with it, what you can do is take that drawing and put it in the mirror, just like you're looking at your own face, and it's like looking at it for the first time, and then your, um, what you might want to change will stick right out, and you'll be able to change it. So think of it, remember that about putting it in the mirror. And uh, writers can do the same things by um, taking a, a story that's handwritten and typing it up, or have somebody else read it back to them. It's just like giving another view of it. Now I'm just go going around the edge with my gray marker, and hopefully he makes his face look a little bit rounder. And that, and I've got, I'm going to do his ear while I'm at it. And here's a place I can put the shading is right around his helmet to try to make it look round. Because he's not flat Stanley, he is hedgy, and he's from a book, and he's round. So there he is with his. Is that helmet starting to look a little bit like it's round? I. If I was home, I could, I'd spend a long time doing that. And then his, the paw that's furthest away is going to have that gray color to make it go further away. And same with this leg that's furthest away. And that will have a little bit of gray on it, too, to make it look more distant. And then I have, let's see if I have a gray that's a little bit more, has more ink in it. Because, you know, you, if you leave the marker, the top of these markers off for just like for very long, then they dry up. So here are his prickles. And our head, we ended up buy, getting a hedgehog, or buying a hedgehog for a pet. And we've had two. And they are, are, they are African pygmy hedgehogs. And they have, their prickles have three colors on them. So I'm just going to kind of sketch. That's what I use for a model for Hedgie, the African pygmy. So even right where his tummy is, that could have a little shading. And you can either use the same color or you can use a little bit of a gray. Probably the same color would be even better. Now if you look at my backdrop, you can see most of the colors in my book are blues and greens. So I chose to put Hedgie's uniform, his flight suit, red so that you'd be able to spot him. Because in some parts of the book, he's really far away and he's um, you'd be able to spot a red, whereas if he was blue, he'd just blend in with the background. So that's why he has a red suit on. So there's his, the red suit. He's got a little lightning insignia. And his belt and holds his tummy in. He's kind of a round guy. But doesn't mean he's not smart and brave, just because he's a little round. Oh, his, those are his moon boots. And then the last thing I'll do is just put his blue belt on, and then his stripes on his boots. And then an artist should always sign their work, so I hope you will do that too. And I'm going to put the date on because even though I'm a big lady that has done lots of books, I still hope that every book is going to be better than the last one. And if you practice, you get better. And that's, I just want to encourage you about that because drawing is just like playing baseball or a musical instrument or riding a bike, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And you, no one ever starts out being perfect on their first try. 
So give it some, t give it some time. And I'm going to put October 2006. And if you do that on your drawings, and then you wait till 2007 comes and put them side by side, I, I can guarantee you'll go, oh, look at how much better that I've gotten. So that will be a really, I can guarantee that you'll have that happy experience of learning how to draw just by doing it. If all of you look down at your finger and thumb, you'll see that you have little lines in your fingers. And that's your fingerprint. And everybody in the world has a different fingerprint. And no one has one just like yours. You are the only one. And when you draw a picture or you write a story, it's the same thing. No one can draw a picture just like you. And no one can write a story just like you. It's totally unique and special. And that really hit me one time when a teacher sent me this mural. It was rolled up in a big, long tube. And it had 50 drawings of a hedgehog. And she and her, her kids at school had gotten on my website and, and watched the How to Draw a Hedgehog video. And so she sent 50 hedgehogs. It was entitled Hedgehog Heaven. Everybody had drawn a hedgehog, and every hedgehog was on a cloud. And everyone was different. For example, 49 of them were going to the left, and one was going to the right. And then there was one hedgehog that looked really dangerous. It had big spikes and a menacing look to its eye. And it was another fashion hedgehog that had pink eyeshadow and long eyelashes. Every single one was different. And then uh, there was a third one that had a bow on every prickle. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and I could never have thought of that. As a matter of fact, I said to myself, look at all these hedgehogs. Not only are, is each one different, but every single one was better than I could draw. Because kids have a certain pizzazz in their artwork that adults don't have to really try hard to get. And sometimes they can never find it again. So I would make a challenge to you to turn off the television and get all your art materials out and sit like for an hour and just draw. Make it like you're playing. And what will happen is you'll start drawing, and then all of a sudden time will just kind of disappear. And all of a sudden, poof, you'll look down and you'll have a wonderful drawing there that no one else in the world could do anything like. And we will all be so admiring of that. And I think you will have a feeling happy inside you that you created something. So happy drawing and happy reading. And thank you very much for being such a good audience. Thank you. I'll see you when it's time to have your book signed. Okay.